Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 20. Oh, man, I, I always thought it was 21st. Wow, this month really passed by quick, didn't it? Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem. The weekly premium is not today. Uh, let's see, check real quick. Uh, no free coins. Okay, today's problem is 2141, maximum running time of N computers, and it is a hard problem. Um, the problem with these hard problems uh, isn't that it's hard. It's that uh, is that if you ha have the idea of how to uh, approach the problem, it's already half the problem. I kind of talked about this either yesterday or the day before, um, but it's still true, right? I mean, I think that there is some notable exceptions. For example, dynamic programming is kind of a technique, but it's not a problem. I mean, I know that people differentiate areas by areas, and that DP and is one distinct one and, and binary search is another distinct one. But within DP, there's a huge range of different problem types. And so like, it's a hint, it's an idea, it's a direction, but it's not everything, right? With binary search, especially at the level of leak code, can definitely be that case. I mean, there's certainly difficult, uh, more difficult binary search problems where even if you know it's binary search, you may not get it. But I, I don't know. I, w I want to say that lead code and interviews in general are probably not on that level quite yet. Um, so yeah, that's all I want to say about that. So I hope, I mean, I haven't looked at this yet, but I just wanted to, to say that and hopefully, um, uh, hopefully we'll see. Anyway, okay, let's take a look at this form. I don't remember it, but just judging by the number, it feels like it's a contest from not that long ago, right? So yeah, but uh yeah and you know i've done most recent contests so okay so you have n computers you're given an integer n and an zero indexed integer array batteries where i of battery can run a computer for batteries i minutes you're interested in or n okay so you have some batteries Initially, you could insert at most one battery into each computer after that and at any integer time moment you can remove a battery from a computer and insert it and another battery any number of times. Okay. We only have one battery, right? So it doesn't, yeah. Oh, or you could remove a new battery. Huh? Wait. Oh, into each computer. The one battery is for each computer. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, and then you can put any number of batteries. We turn the maximum number of minutes you can run all the N computers simultaneously. Given that, okay, so we have batteries that those three, three, three. We have two computers, and we're trying to figure out. Uh, we're trying to figure out um, how long you can run it, right? Okay, so let's take a look at the example. This problem is kind of a mouthful and a word flow. So, yeah, there's a lot of words. Okay, so you have three, 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 so you can do, 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 and then you can exchange, after two minutes, you can exchange to, after one, 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 and then it'll last four minutes. Two, one, one, right? And this is kind of the annoying thing about this particular problem, right? Is that it can weigh easily, I mean, you know, it could have easily been a dynamic programming problem, kind of what we talk about, right? In that, if I didn't kind of have a hint about the answer, in a way, I'll be like, oh, can this be DP? And then kind of maybe explore that DP. And to be honest, um, that, that may be my first inclination as well, right? My first uh, angle would be to think that, hey, maybe it's binary search. Oh, sorry, it's dynamic programming. Because something about the ends, maybe I have to look at this thing, and then maybe I would be like, oh, 10 to the 9, 10 to the 5th, maybe not. But I would have to like, play around with binary uh, with dynamic programming but now that we have an idea with binary search though maybe we're wrong so then maybe that's the interesting but uh, maybe i'll think about it that way as a hint as a direction as a as a you know like i said it's not even that like you know uh it's not even like that is too bad it's just that i think recognizing problem is part of the things you're practicing and in here they're almost giving away you know, let's say half the problem is implementation, half is the algo. They give them away like maybe half of the algo part. So like they give away 25% of the problem. And that, that's the thing is that you don't get to practice that if that's the what you want to work on. So I don't know. That's a little bit iffy. In any case, okay, let's see. What, what happens if we do binary search, right? 
Can we do greedy? Uh, with binary search. So let's say we have four minutes. Is this the thing where we do we do that that trick with the slope? Like we sort the batteries and then you look at the maximum and then the average. No, would that work? Or is that just the, okay? So yeah, three batteries, two computers. Three minutes each. So and every step but to take two. This is still a hard problem though, I'm not gonna lie. So maybe there is some other things to work on. But but this now becomes a, a, an exercise on figuring out that exact greedy solution versus um, just coming up with because that's part of the difficulty of hard problems is also that you have these almost like a compound problem of like okay you have this component and this component that you have to try to figure out and piece them together and that's why a lot of people struggle with um contest hard problems is because now instead of just solving one idea you have to solve two ideas but like i said if you are given half of the idea then now it's it's a bit easier right so um yeah it's a little bit weird, but okay. Hmm. So, okay, so let's say, do, 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 do. let's say we could solve it in four, or let's say we binary search and we want the answer to be four. What would that look like? Well, first of all, obviously we just checked that this is at least eight, which is this true. Um, and then how would you fit it? What is the heuristic? Right. Mm. Hmm. This one is still kind of tricky. But. Mm, all right. Let's say we sort these, right? So then we greedily want to put the max on the bottom or on the uh, on well, just greedily put them. And then let's say the time is four. Yeah, I guess this is what I was talking about with that. I call it a. a, a, a I. I uh, I still don't have a consistent understanding of it, even though I have the visualization in my head. Or rather, I don't have a good, clean visualization in my head, and I have to always figure it out. Right? So, okay, so let's say there's four, the time is four. That means that. Hmm. Okay, I think I think I got it. Okay, so let's say the time is four, then each battery's contribution could be at most four, right? So then that takes care of one computer, and that, so but if it's less than four, then you can take it from another one.
and then just kind of sum it up, right? Something like that. Mm. Eh, this is an annoying one, isn't it? Okay, so we have n computers. So for, eh, let's just sort by the way, sort and uh, maybe reverse is equal to true. But, And then, okay, so what's the binary search? Let's set up the binary search first. Um, and basically, we're searching for the answer. And so left is going to be zero minutes is probably not right. So we have need at least one minute. And then the upper bound is going to be um, maybe something like sum of, sum of batteries over N. Plus one maybe or minus one? I, uh, well, definitely not minus one. Uh, I think that's that should be good. Maybe I'm off by one though, right? So then, if this is good, then what happens? If this is good, that means uh, mid is a good candidate. So and we want to try a longer minute. So we said left is equal to mid. Else right is mid is not good and we want to see smaller so we have to do minus one and then we have to adjust this for rounding and then we return uh well left and left is equal to right so we just do left right um and then good for uh, uh what i call a target so this is the target answer and basically now for each battery b in batteries what happens right So, do we want to do it per battery or per computer? Well, each battery's contribution could be at most n, or no, not n, a target. So, maybe, eh, let me think about this for a second, but maybe something like contribution is equal to. Um, min of target b and then and then what does that mean uh, so bad at this one because it comes up like a few times last year the last year and a half or maybe or something like this and, I, and every time i've been really bad about it um you and i think during the contest i might have looked it up i don't remember well, that's what I would have to would be doing now, to be honest. But I'm trying my best to kind of redo it. Um, is it just like return contribution? This is the contribution is greater than or equal to um, n times target, right? Is that right? I mean, it seems too. I mean, I, that's why I wanted to write for a while, but I'm trying to still prove in my head. I think that's why I, I, I'm trying to. Uh, don't, maybe I got this wrong answer. Uh, so I, I'm struggling to prove this a little bit in my head. That's why I kind of weighed it out a little bit. Because basically, the core observation, which you have to prove a little bit, is that. Um, it, this was actually very similar to Q3 in a way of the last contest or, or the weekly, I believe the weekly contest, in that you have to prove the same thing in that you're trying to prove that you're not reusing the same battery at the same time. But I think you can do it with an exchange argument. So, okay. So I think for the purpose of this problem um, and we kind of went over binary search the entire week, so I'm not going to focus on the binary search part. Hopefully, by now, you, uh, we'll go back to the last couple of days of binary search problems and you know just kind of go over it, because I'm going to focus on the greedy problem. And this one is kind of hard for me, even though I I want to say maybe in, in the back of my mind, I have a little bit of a cheating thing in the sense that I've 
I've done this a few times and I kind of have this reminder of how to do it because I'm, I, 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 I know that I struggle with this a few times um, and I'm trying to in this and over the course of this video and what you saw me do is kind of reprove to myself because I'm not sure that this was correct, right? Um, and the, the thing with these things and, and when, you know, uh, very often I get prob or, uh, questions where people ask me, hey, how do you solve this so quickly? How do you, how do you know this proof so quickly? How did you do the proof so quickly? And to be honest, the answer is usually and I, I'm honest about it, right? Like I'm not trying to lie, people. Uh, I just tell people that it's experience, right? It's that I've done a similar problem before. I've done before, and even though the problems may be different, um, the observation, the parts of it, the there are certain parts of it where it is the same, and therefore, like, like it's something like okay, maybe a proof is like if A is equal to if A then B, um, and I know that A is true because I proved A before, so then I could kind of move on to second parts and so forth, right? like part B and so forth. Um, and even though, and sometimes it's like a pseudo proof, and I might misremember, but you know the, that's the thing that happens with experience and practice. Um, and this one, um, I kind of dug into that a little bit, in that, in that uh, that's. Like I've done this a few times, maybe even this particular problem, I guess a year and a half ago now, wow. Um, that I kind of dug into it. But okay, but here's going to be my honest attempt to try to prove it. I don't know if it's going to be exhaustive, but that's why I kind of was like just holding, like trying to prove to myself, even though I knew the idea. Um, and it's not, and the, the, the hard part about these proofs sometimes is that you only have cases that verify what you believe in. But not cases that falsify. Um, that you know, you don't prove it. Like it's easy to prove yourself wrong because you just come up with a counterexample. Then to prove yourself right, because it's hard to come up with an ex or if you come up with an example where you're right, it's not good enough, right? Uh, you still have to prove it correct. So that's kind of the things that I struggle with. But okay, so. So I think there are a couple of uh, one way to prove it. I think is by exhaustion. Uh, or exhaustive, hmm. I am exhausted for sure. But the idea is okay. So this let's start with this part of the uh, the min. So basically, this part hopefully makes sense, which means that if if target is oh sorry, if the battery is bigger than target, then uh, what happens, right? Well, you can use more than the target because let's say you have four minutes, you can have a battery. If you have a battery that's ten minutes, there's no way to split it, so it can only contribute four minutes or whatever the target minutes is, right? So that's what this is, this reference to, right? Can only do to up to target, right? Um, and then there are two, two, I think there's a sort of an exchange argument, right? Where, okay, so we know that the battery that we care about now, it's gonna be less than or equal to target. So then, I don't know if I would, I, I overuse pigeonhole a lot. I don't know if this kind of is, but basically let's say for, for one example is max is equal target, then let's say B, yeah, B, 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 or let's just say one is the battery one, right? So let's say target is equal to two, two, four, right? Let's say you have a, then in that case, one way to kind of split them up um, is to use the battery three in one and one in the other, right? Well, due to, due to kind of the pigeon, pigeonhole principle, um, well, one is that, let's say you replace this one with a two, there is a sort of an exchange thing in that like, okay, why don't you just replace this one with a two? And of course, this also works even if B is not exactly equal to target, because that, mean, that, that makes the argument even stronger, right? Because if you have this one, then it's like, okay, why don't you just exchange them to one and two, right? And then the other thing is that even if, you're forced to, you're never forced to, um, because let's say you have something like this, then you can also just change this one to this one, and then also this one to do it. So there's some argument like that. I know this isn't a rigorous, rigorous proof, by, and you can kind of map out all these kind of uh, scenarios and then convince. Um, but for me, like to be honest, I'm not gonna lie, if you don't believe me too much, uh, I, don't, I don't blame you because I don't believe myself uh, for that. 
but the but because B can only go up to target, you never have a scenario where you're forced to have two or the same battery at the same minute, right? Um, if that makes sense, because because by definition, if you have only up to target number of battery minutes, then you can always make it so that you know you slide it out exactly, right? So yeah. Maybe that's not the point, you know. But that's basically the idea, though. Um, and with that in mind, then all you have to do is you don't have to figure out the configuration to. You don't have to figure out the configuration. You just know that it's going to fit together as long as the total is big enough. Um, and I think that's basically the idea. Uh, yeah. And what's the complexity here? Um, well, this thing runs in log r, where r is equal to. Uh, or is the range of the numbers or something like the range of the sum of the numbers or something like this um, I didn't even look at con uh, 10 to the 9 but yeah um, and technically it you can actually add in an n in there in a way because the range of the numbers is going to be r times n is a the actual range is going to be uh, r is is the maybe I sp let me rewrite this where r times n r is the individual range and so it's going to be log of r times n um, as a result because the, the the individual range of a number is r and you have n of them so the max is going to be n times r and you want to take the log of this number right because uh, we're binary searching it so that's the number of iterations um, And of course, this is just O of n. So this becomes actually O of n log Rn time and space. We don't use that much extra space, which is O of 1. Uh, oh, I actually lied a little bit. I forgot about the sorting. So um, actually, do I even need sorting anymore? The way that I did it, I actually do not need sorting. So I thought that I might do something. I, well, I did the sorting because I wanted to ha uh, have a visual proof. But actually, I don't think we need sorting, right? Because there's nothing that assumes the property is sorted. So yeah, uh, let's give it some minute again. Maybe we're slightly faster this time, or we should be. I mean, we're doing less work, and it's over one time. So yeah, uh, mm. actually, surprisingly, it doesn't change. Oh wait, no, this does change. But this this thing didn't change on the upper left, but the the chart changed. So that's a little bit weird, actually. UI is a little bit unexpected. So we shaved like 10%. I don't know. But I mean, obviously, that's input dependent. So I don't know. It depends on the number of inputs with size n or something like this. So yeah. Uh, cool. That's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Uh, yeah. Stay good. Stay healthy to good mental health. Hope your batteries are charged. I'll see you later and take care. Bye bye.